What's up everyone, Alex here. So I wasn't expecting to make a video on Wii U emulation for Android for some time, as I was actually awaiting for some kind of official build to come out for Android. And what we have at the moment is a beta build that you can get from GitHub. And I was generally just quite curious about it. And the more I thought about it, the more I was kind of excited about what's happening at the moment. So I thought we'd check it out and have a look at some games. I got some games here I've uh, downloaded and Basically, I basically came up with a list where I thought, okay, what would be really nice to play on an Android device that you really can't any other way? Uh, I suppose the other option would be, for example, if you wanted to play Batman Arkham Origins or Splinter Cell Blacklist, um, you would have WinLater for that. I haven't personally tested it, and I'm not like hugely interested in WinLater. I, there's so much potential with it, but I always found like setting it up to be a little bit of a pain. And I also have a PC handheld, so if I'm going to play PC games, I don't need my Odin to do that, even though the battery life is is very good. But um, yeah, I thought we'd check some things out. Now, not all of these work, and we should expect problems because it is in a beta at the moment. So there isn't really any time frame of when CMU will be like the first official build will be ready for Android. But I also thought this would be a good test for me to uh, do a video where like if I showed some Nintendo games, like what would happen because Nintendo now basically have all the means they have to take down literally anything they want if it shows any Nintendo that they don't like, which is ridiculous, but they have the power to do so. So if I was to say do a review of a device in the future and want to show certain Nintendo games, possibly switch emulation, uh, then that video could be taken down, which is not fair, but you know, it is what it is. And I honestly am a bit guided by that because I think, uh, honestly, piracy sucks in a lot of forms, but then having emulation and playing games the way you want to play them, I think is important preservation, but also, um, you know, if you have, for example, a game that you really love, but you want to experience it even better. Emulation can take that further and you're not pirating. You're not doing anything to uh, not support Nintendo. You've already supported Nintendo. You just want to enjoy their game even further. But that is a huge discussion. So let's get on with Wii U emulation. So why actually, let's have a look at the, the emulator itself. It's very, very simple. You have your list of games. Let me first clarify, if you are getting games for the Wii U, you do not want to get WUX format. You need WUA. If you download WUX, then you'll be annoyed because you've just taken time to put it on the SD card, like I did. Doesn't work, you need WUA. And there is um, an internet archive, you can get those instead if you like, so that will help. So let's have a quick look at the settings here. So you can add your game path, which is just, you know, wherever on the device you want to put your games. Uh, input settings, so there's an overlay, so if you're like using a phone, you know, you can use the screen instead of a controller. So we're not really going to look into that because we don't really need to, because we're using the beautiful Odin 2 which I want to talk about a bit as well, because there's a lot of discussion to be had about the Retroid Pocket. But uh, anyway, so controller one, basically you want to use the Wii U gamepad. I couldn't get Pro Controller to work, and I think there is some problem with using D-pad at the moment. I'm not really sure why. I have it all set up the way it should be, but D-pad is not working for me. So maybe that's the thing. If anybody uh, has used this and had a different experience, please tell me, because I, I don't really know what's going on there. Um, graphic settings, not a lot to do here. We basically leave this ticked on. We don't really need V-Sync, it's up to you. Audio settings are very simple as well. Uh, you know, with the Wii U emulator, you can set it up so that you can hear the game, um, the, yeah, the gamepad, the, the Wii U tablet itself, because that has speakers, but you don't want to be listening to that, because that'll just get uh, messy. Graphics packs, um, yeah, we don't want to be looking into like advanced settings just yet because it is a beta. So, you know, we'll leave that to be. And overlay is basically what we want to see on the screen. Do we want to see the frames? Yes, we do. Although I think sometimes when I've played, it's not shown for some reason. I don't know if that's a bug. We'll just leave it to frames because honestly, we don't need to see too much information. It's a beta. Uh, we, we could scrutinize this more when it's like having regular updates, official build, and so on. So, going back, there is one annoying thing about this at the moment, and that is 
when you start a game, there's no easy way to quit it. You basically have to quit out the entire emulator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with Push My World because <laughs> this is literally the first thing I tested when I thought about this. So I was like, hell yes, I want Push My World on my Odin 2. This game is fantastic. And there's a few of these games uh, with different styles, but this was the first one I ever played. And I really, 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 really enjoyed it. It gets a lot tougher as you go along, but the premise is basically you have to push and pull these blocks and you only have a certain amount of room to do so. And then you have to pull one of these blocks out enough so that the little push mo up top, so you'll see here, is if I pull this one out, uh, the little kid will come out the top. The only like bad thing about this game is at the start there is like a lot of tutorials that you can't really skip. And you're like mashing away and you just want to get rid of it. Anyway, so you can see that it's running really smooth. And yeah, like I said, there's no FPS showing up. But it is running very smooth. The only problem we have is there's something wrong with the shaders. You can see that these characters are both really uh, dark. I don't know if I can zoom in on him. But yeah, these characters should not be this dark. So that's the only problem with this game so far. But otherwise, it's running absolutely smooth. So, and this is one of the earlier puzzles. Later on, they get like really crazy. It's kind of bizarre. And uh, I shouldn't have picked a puzzle game whilst I'm recording because uh, I'm doing this in one take. <laughs> so, like, probably going to get it wrong. Let's see if I can get it right. Now I'm going to mess this up. Okay, I absolutely shouldn't have picked a puzzle game. Anyway, so in this game, you can like hit this little start button, reset the whole puzzle if you want to. There are loads and loads of puzzles. Um, so this is definitely a game to play. Very playable right now, if you don't mind this little shader thing happening at the moment. But um, yeah, with a full release, I'd see this game as playable straight away. So that's super cool. Ooh, what did I do there? Oh, because I touched the tablet. Wait, what mode am I on? Okay. So I've set up one of these back buttons so that um, if I hold it in, it will show the gamepad instead. Except both of these are showing like the same thing. Um, was there a button to show it side by side? I can't remember now. But basically you can hold a button in to look at your gamepad and then touch wherever you want on the screen. And that's now the gamepad, which is really cool. That's what I do. I do that and then that. Anyway, like I said, there is no button to like exit out of the game right now. So I just sort of swipe a couple of times, exit, and then just open the app again. It is what it is. So let's go from Pushmo to Yoshi. You know, we'll build it up a bit to some of the more demanding games. So we're going to Yoshi's Woolly World. And like I said, now I'm showing something from Nintendo. So are they going to shut this video down? I'd like to know. I think I can sacrifice one copyright strike to find this information out. <laughs> it literally is like an, a, a massive future part of this channel. You know, do I show Nintendo games or not? So I'd like to find this out. So I tested this a bit earlier. There were a few like uh, rendering issues. Like here looks great. I mean, I think this is a 30 FPS game uh, anyway. So. That's to be expected. But once I got into one of the levels, it started to look a little funny with some things, but was still for the most part, uh, massively playable, which is great. So go back to World 1-1. I tested this out for a little bit. I was able to play for a while and nothing happened. So that was really cool. Another cool thing about checking out this emulator at the moment is that this is another app, which is like a, an emulator where this will have a future for devices like the Retro Pocket Mini and the Retro Pocket 5. Uh, maybe not the Mini, because uh, that has a 4x3 screen. And I'm really looking forward to testing that out because uh, I've ordered both. I've ordered the Mini and the 5, um, which I don't know why. I just, I, if anything, I was more interested in the 5. But there's something about the Mini I'm really curious about, just like the size and power of a little OLED screen. It's like, yeah, I think I want to check this out. I've got them both in black because uh, 
as you can see, I just love black. <laughs> I always seem to regret if I get like a different color, like uh, like the purple Mayu Mini, which I ended up dying because uh, I actually wanted to dye it black, and I, end I basically made it a dark cherry instead. And I was like, okay, that's a good compromise. So sometimes, I mean, that some of the color options do look cool, like the Retro Pocket 5's uh, GameCube option looks really sweet. Um, but I think I would just like the black more. Anyway, I got to this point and I just couldn't figure out if I could drop down here or these platforms. Wait. Oh, it told me to mash X and it created platforms. Oh, because the balls are made of yarn. I get ya, I get ya. So it makes the floors so cute. Whoa, what am I pushing? Oh, it's not rendered in. So you see what I mean? So Yoshi's face has not um yet rendered properly. And there's something here I'm pushing that's not rendered. So yeah, not entirely functional, but still uh, cute. This is that era of Nintendo where they uh, were doing like really, uh, would you call this a gimmick? They were doing weird things with their games. So like Kirby was yarn, this was yarn and all this other stuff. And they were like, oh no, what are they gonna do next? But uh, it was around like the Wii U when I stopped having so much interest in games like Yoshi and Kirby. But uh, yeah, Yoshi is super, super cute. All right, so wait, there's a button I think that holds it in place, yeah. Uh-oh, bit of slowdown. So yeah, you can see it just compiled new shaders. That's gonna be happening a lot when you play these new games. So I, I'd already done this area, so it didn't need to uh, cache anything new. But I've noticed with everything I've played so far, it needs to keep caching new stuff you've seen. I am slightly curious how much space that's going to take up on the, the internal hard drive, but we will see. <gasps> Nintendo and their little surprises. <laughs> I probably could see myself just sort of like zoning out and playing this. Um, I'm finding it really hard playing games lately. I actually bought Astro Bot and because um, I've heard really great things about it and I keep wanting to play it. I keep getting busy or getting interested in things like this. Um, yeah, so you can see that it runs really well. Oh, what do I do here? Oh, I lick the yarn. Oh yeah, you lick the yarn, don't you, Yoshi? <laughs> anyway, that's working really well. So that's another thing that surprised me. There is one game here which surprised me more than others and was one of the reasons where I thought, okay, I really want to check this out. Um, like I said though, so for Android, um, basically the most important Switch titles, uh, sorry, the most important Wii U titles were ported to the Switch and we have a decent Switch emulator. So it's like, mm. but there are a selection of titles, like I said, on the Wii U that you can't get on the Switch, um, but there were PC ports. So like uh, if you were looking to like curate a, a, a lot of people like to curate a exclusives list for a console. And it doesn't really matter if, like, say, the Switch has everything uh, that the Wii U already had. But, uh, yeah, so games like Batman, Splinter Cell, Deus Ex, Ninja Gaiden, Mass Effect, all on the PC. And like I said, you probably could do these on Win later. But I'd be very curious to see the future of um, these titles in particular on this emulator, because I think they work very well in an Android environment. So... Let's go from Yoshi to, let's have a look at, so I looked at Twilight Princess. Let's look at Wind Waker, which I haven't looked at yet. So we can see the startup process and you can see it like running fresh um, without me having done a thing. So we're kind of, you know, compiling new shaders. I think what I have seen on this is it looks a lot darker than it should be. Also, when it comes to Wind Waker and Twilight Princess uh, as games on Android, you can get widescreen patches for the GameCube versions and other things. So you can play them in like really uh, modern ways, uh, which might make these like not as important, but I don't actually know a lot about these Wii U uh, ports. They might actually have stuff for, uh, oh, into my name. That, that keypad is tiny. 
I'll call myself Diggy. <laughs> so right, brilliant. It's right. I'll delete it later. Maybe, uh, maybe these saves won't even matter when you uh, playing on like the first official build. At which point, you know, it'll be great to then get the GitHub for Obtainium and let that just update itself whenever it needs to. Uh, so I believe. Oh, did they make it skippable in the Wii U version? That's important. So it's doing a whole lot of shader work up there. And the only stuttering I can see is because of those shaders. This is running quite well. Oh, this is one of those games where if it was on an OLED, it would look gorgeous. So I wonder... And I think it does. I think the Retroid Pocket 5 has enough power to play this on CMU. So yeah, I wanted to talk about Retroid Pocket 5 for a while because there was... It was kind of a weird controversial announcement. They took like a couple of weeks to drip, uh, drip feed all the information about it. And then they conveniently left out that Android 10 was the OS and that it wasn't going to be anything else. Anyway, after a couple of days of everyone's backlash... They reached out to Qualcomm and they found that actually the Retroid 5 uh, will be able to launch with Android 13. But for the Mini, you'll have to flash it yourself. I think that's just a time constraint thing. So for the Mini, I don't think Android 13 is that big a deal. But obviously, it's something I think you should do. Because I think with the Mini, I see that more as just an emulation-only thing. Like, the 4x3 screen is a bit more novel. So, that works really well for everything up to PlayStation 2. You don't have to worry about widescreen or anything. And I have no idea what certain Switch or Android games would look like on it because of the screen. And obviously, PSP is not going to look great on it because that's going to be squished. Unless you want to, uh, you know, compress it into a 4x3 image, which... Um, some games look okay, I'd have to say, because I did that with uh, the SP, I think. Oh, wait, is this ladder not rendered? Or is it just the top? But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I honestly think some people, like, are forgetting a bit. Like, the differences between these retro pockets have not been, like, massive um, power increases, you know? Like, the difference between the... Uh, the uh, the three plus and then the four is not very big at all. Um, the most convenient thing about it, I think, is more the layout because they didn't put the um, the buttons on the side anymore. You know, like you've got these all these buttons up front. So uh, the four ended up well. The four pro ended up being a bigger power increase, and I think that was more noticeable because um, the difference between say. Uh, PlayStation 2 games playing really well uh, between the 3 Plus and the 4 Pro uh, was the difference between choppy and smooth. But what is happening between the 4 Pro and the 5, what I believe is having smooth but a uh, higher resolution and just being a bit more consistent. And for the price, I think that's pretty good. Um, I, for me, I am more interested in... Uh, the design of the device itself because um, I am not in love with the shape of the 4 like when I had the 3 plus I really liked it at the time and I think I said in one of my videos that because I had a I had an Odin the first Odin and something about the 3 plus just made me enjoy it more for a period of time but the 4 Pro could not keep me away from the Odin 2. There was no way that was happening. This is, uh, you see what the Odin 2 did instead of the Odin, is it did make it more ergonomic, uh, nicer to hold. They, they improved a lot of things about it. And that's what I'm kind of seeing with the 5, uh, with the addition of um, a uh, OLED panel on top, which I think is awesome because I really wanted the Odin 2 Mini to be... Um, OLED, but it's not. It's mini LED, which basically just means it's brighter, pretty much. Which I'm not... I, I don't care too much for. And it being, like, what was it? $350? I don't know, man. I just couldn't justify 
because I already love the Odin 2. I love its size. I love the way it feels. The bezels aren't too bad. Um, this is just such a good device, and um, I'm always finding more reasons to enjoy it. So, you know what? Let me talk about that now. Wind Waker's looking pretty nice, except it's looking a little... Don't look at me like that. <laughs> He's like, oh, he just talks and talks and talks. So, um, you know, for example, let me close. Oh, I can't look at my Switch for a moment because I switched out the SD cards. I don't have enough room for... What I was basically going to go into is I curated a bit of a better Switch library uh, of games I already own and want to play, like, on here with better battery life and stuff, which was really cool. Also, Marvel vs. Capcom Collection just came out today as definitely something you should support if you want to see more Marvel vs. Capcom. You know, it's, it's telling them right now, give me more of this. Um, but you can also uh, play the Switch version on um, Yuzu. <laughs> it runs great. It runs really well, which surprised me because, you know, it's like a new release and you don't know if they added some new code or something that might, you know, that Yuzu doesn't have because it's not running anymore. Um, right, quick look at Twilight Princess as well. Now, this is one where I booted it up, and to me, because I've already played a lot of Twilight Princess with high-definition textures, widescreen, and some other stuff, um, to me it looks exactly the same, pretty much. However, like I said before, I don't know the main differences between... <gasps> That's right, I couldn't save earlier. I couldn't save earlier because the D-pad wasn't working. I don't know what's going on with that. So if anybody watching this knows, please do tell me because it says you have to press down on the D-pad to save your game in this. So um, let's skip the cutscenes so that we can just run around a bit. And for the most part, the only real problem I saw on this was the mini-map in the corner. That was just glitching out and, um, you know, should be an easy fix. When, uh, when more effort is put into this emulator. But apart from that, it's running uh, very, very smooth 30 frames per second. Now, you know, I would say at this point, I wouldn't recommend uh, people like legit try and play games from start to finish on this current build for whatever reason, you know. Because um, I couldn't tell you if like, I mean, yeah, you should be able to carry your save over, should if you can find where it is. But I have to say, it's looking really good. Can we, how do you go into first person in this? How do you, oh, there you go, you click that in. Ah, I just wanted to have a quick look at the sand because I think the high definition textures I was using for the GameCube version, I think they were ripped from this game. Ah, oh, dude, there's something really nostalgic just, just about playing a, a Zelda game. Good times. I am actually um, kind of looking forward to the new Zelda, the Echoes of Wisdom. Um, yeah, something about it where I'm like, actually, this could be really fun. I'm kind of looking forward to how that's turning out. I haven't been, like, super into Zelda games. I think... One of the reasons I got a little bit excited is because there was like a preview recently and they said classic dungeons are coming back. And it's like, oh, I've missed those dungeons. I, I want a Zelda game with classic dungeons again. So that would be cool. And of course, I'll be really curious to see if it will run on Yuzu or if you need Sadachi or something on Android. But obviously, that being a brand new Nintendo and Zelda game, uh, probably will not be <laughs> showing it on my YouTube for any reason. This looks gorgeous. So like I said, this is just the beta version and um, I'm not exactly sure what that means. I can't, I'm not sure if it's just like an unofficial build where, because CMU is open source now, I'm not sure if basically whosever GitHub it is, they just kind of like compiled it and did some stuff or just compiled what was already ready available for Android. Um, like, a, I don't know a lot about that, but... Uh, 
Yeah, very, very cool. So what I am hoping for is, and I'll show you a little bit after this, there's a couple of games that are not working properly, but they're games that I think would be huge additions to, to just having a, a collection on Android. So when I mentioned earlier that I was like curating a bit more of a list of games for uh, for my for Switch on Android, uh, I'm not going to try and do this by the way whilst I'm talking. Um, so I was on my Geek One S recently because I've been playing that a lot, and I was looking at my Steam library, and I was looking at like different indie games and things I have, and I was like, these are all really cool games I'd love to play on my Geek One S if the Geek One S had more battery because it can run out quite quick depending on how much wattage you use or how you want to. Sorry, that was the Retro Pocket. Yeah, yeah, I don't use it. I don't update it. <laughs> so that made me decide, okay, so maybe like some of these games already own, maybe I should try and get these on Yuzu because um, it is annoying when you're playing a game you don't think is demanding and then the, the battery just goes. So on the Android, uh, for the Odin 2, you don't have to worry about battery life as much. But that's really cool. That's running particularly well besides that mini-map. Um, oh my god, I've been uh, recording for a while again. So let's look at the games that are not working. So I was really curious to see Blacklist because uh, this is a game I actually wanted to play again recently and have uh, on, my, um, on my Geek One S. So I was like, oh, this could be cool to play on the Odin if it works, but it's going to crash in a moment. And for the sake of uh, a recording curse, I'll open it twice, just in case. Because I've had times when I'm recording and a game will suddenly not work for absolutely no reason, and sometimes they will work and surprise me completely so i just you know just for my own curiosity i want to see what happens but um yeah it's entirely possible that this is very playable in win later if you can do that i don't know if there is um i don't know if ubisoft released their games on gog not too sure about that but um I might as well go into it now the re like i i have set up win later and i've used it a little bit but i have had issues and I think um, I think it's mostly because when I run into certain problems and there isn't an exact answer I find it quite frustrating and then also uh, configuring the controller as well I thought this controller would just work as if it's like X input so this would map to whatever Xbox uh, input for Windows would be but I haven't had that be the case so much so actually, if somebody uh, watching this could recommend possibly a good tutorial for Win Later, that would be um, interesting. I'd check that out for sure. So Ninja Gaiden Three is uh, this port is an interesting version because I don't know if it has unique content, but it definitely has like the bells and whistles of a Wii U port. So um, I was actually interested on play. Uh, uh, I can't speak. I was interested in playing this version on CMU, but like on my um, on my Geek One S, which I might still do someday. But you can see there's all this rendering problem in the background, and as soon as I start a game, uh, it's just not going to render properly. But the interest. Wait, can I load game? Nope. The interesting thing about this is that even though it's not rendering, um, the sound uh, is pretty smooth and you can hear what you're doing in the background. So you can run around and do stuff and it sounds like it's playing well, it's just not rendering for some reason. So uh, this is one of those games where I hope, where like say CMU 1.0 for Android comes out, that actually it will run really well. So uh, what button is that? Skip. What button is that? Oh, it's minus. It's really weird to think we've had these for nearly a year. Uh, Plastic-wise, I mean, obviously, you use a shell enough, you know, you, you, like sweat absorbs in it. I've been cleaning it now and then. Today it needs a bit of a clean, but uh, I'm surprised, actually, how well the quality of the Odin 2 has held up over an entire 
or almost an entire year. So what burn is that? B? So I don't know what's going on at the moment, but I've landed. And I can do stuff. I'll turn it up so you can hear it. So it sounds like it's running really smooth based on all my inputs. It's just not rendering on screen properly. And then, well, you get to see the UI. Uh, but that's it, you can't see it in game. So um, I have high hopes for that in the near future to be playable. What else was not working? Uh, Mass Effect 3 wasn't working. Um, and whilst I was looking this up, I was actually surprised to find out the Mass Effect trilogy is not on Switch. And I thought, that would be a great thing to have on the Switch. Why did they not, why did it, is it, um, does EA have this weird thing about Switch? Or was that years ago? I swear I read something about EA not even wanting to bother putting things on Switch for some reason. Which is kind of stupid. But speaking of the Switch, um, there's a rumour that sometime this month we might get some sort of Nintendo Direct where we will get our first glimpse of the new Switch, which is very exciting. Um, lots of reasons to be excited about that, and something I thought recently, it was like, well, Nintendo Switch 2, whatever it is, um, you know, like, if it's based on Switch hardware, I mean, they would have, I'm imagining Nintendo will put a lot of thought into the security of the new device, I mean, considering all the piracy problems with, uh, with, uh, new Zelda game and so on, um, but imagine a new Switch, and then it's, someone's hacked it. And then you can modify and do stuff to it. With the power that's in a Switch 2, that could be really cool. So I'm really interested to see everything behind the new Switch. Lots of things to think about. Okay, so Mass Effect 3 didn't work. Ninja Gaiden 3 boots, plays, but is not rendering whatever's going on screen. Blacklist uh, crashes out before it can get to the menu. Let's have a look at Batman Arkham Origins. This is the one that's kind of like the middle ground at the moment. And uh, what I was expecting... Uh, most games to be like so it is running uh, but there are rendering problems and then it will crash quite quickly so I'll get I'll just show this off kind of quickly um, the Batman games are on the switch but Origins is not I don't think it is um, so I thought okay this is a great opportunity to have this game on the Odin but like I said win late is probably an option as well there are, other, there are some other games like this. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my voice there. <laughs> so, uh, like Assassin's Creed, for example. Uh, I think it's Assassin's Creed 3 that is on the Wii U, uh, which is on the Switch now. And I'm wondering when CMU's more optimized, which version will be better. I did actually try to play Assassin's Creed 2 on Switch, but I, uh, on Yuzu, but I couldn't get it to work. So... Something I'd actually been thinking about was doing another Switch video for the Odin. Like, it's been nearly a year. What's it like now? What's the best way to play some of these games? Are some of these games even better on Yuzu than they are natively on the Switch? So, for example, um, Resident Evil HD Remake on this um, is decent on the Switch. But I think the loading times and a couple of scenes, the frame rate drops... But on Yuzu, it doesn't have that problem. So technically, it's better to play it on this than it is on a Switch. And you have the better battery life and everything. So um, anyway, yeah, as you can see, Batman is choppy as hell. Flashing in and out. And it is... Should crash. Yeah. Actually, I'm surprised it's not crashed yet. Every time I've tried this, it's crashed by now. It's going to crash. Uh, even if this... <laughs> I'll play this for an hour and record this. This is weird, though. Um, this game is made in Unreal Engine, right? Ooh, Batman looks weird when he doesn't have his cape. He just looks like... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> this is so weird. No, stay away. Yeah, 
I'm like really just paying attention. It's really smooth though, when it, even though it's just not rendering properly. Oh, Batman. <laughs> you know, I don't really have much memory of playing this, but I know I enjoyed it. Actually, I remember playing this when I was sick. I was really sick one time and I was playing this and I was like, I'm glad I have this game. Because it's like killing the time. I kind of remember Troy Baker's Joker was like fairly decent. Um, and basically it's like the Arkham City map with a whole chunk somewhere added down south. Yeah, this game was alright. But I do remember the combat being uh, not as responsive as City. So... Dude, I still can't believe this hasn't crashed yet. This has crashed every time I've tested this. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not... I'm not going to play it like this, but... Not bad for a beta. Not bad at all. I don't know where to go. Down here? Maybe it'll just magically work. Oh, there it went. There we go. <laughs> That's what's been happening to me, but it happened like right at the start. Uh, okay, so Pushmo World is like the most playable thing and super cool puzzle game. Yoshi seems to work, but it has some rendering issues. Uh, I don't know if those are game breaking or, you know, uh, you know, you want to play, but something's not rendering. You know what I mean. Twilight was playing really well, except it's mini HUD. Uh, the map thing. Origins, yeah, that's not great. Wind Waker was pretty good, but looked a bit dark. Splinter Cell does not boot. Ninja Gaiden does not render. Mass Effect does not boot. Now this is the one I'm excited to look at. So, uh, yeah, let's just jump in. Deus Ex Human Revolution, which, again, I'm surprised that neither of the Deus Ex, the newer ones anyway, are on the Switch, because I think those would be amazing additions awesome like um action rpg kind of games um and i love them i loved human revolution um so weird to think it's like oh my god how long has it been 12 years since it came out i have some really distinct memories around what the world was like when this game came out and uh, the world has changed a lot weirdly but not in a cool deus ex kind of way so I have been testing this out, and it's great. Uh, which but A, okay. Yeah. I haven't noticed any rendering issues. I've not really seen any slowdown. This game seems to be running consistently at 30 frames per second. And, oh. <laughs> no, oh, no, it's just doing shaders, I promise. Once you get into it, it's fine. Uh, it's been running so smooth and I'm so surprised. So I just, um, this is a little bit into the game after the intro section. And then you're at Seraph Industries with your new augmentations. And then depending on how much time you stay there and do things, this mission might play out a little differently. But um, this is cool, dude. It's been running really smooth. And if I hold my tablet button, um, I can look at the tablet as well and do tablet stuff, which is super cool. So I can like go look at, oops. Sorry, that settings button uh, is... I can't get rid of that. I can look at my inventory. And if I... Um, how do I get out of this? If I hold this button, which is my weapon wheel, that has to show up on the tablet for some reason, which is like... So if I don't press the tablet button, I can't see what I'm doing. But this one has surprised me the most. It is just... There's no issues with it. But then, like I said, I, I don't know if I could recommend playing something like this on this emulator in its current form. Um, but I'm really enjoying demonstrating like how far we're getting with it. Oh, oh did he see me? I couldn't see, it's kind of dark. <laughs> I gotta remember the buttons now. Which button is it? I was trying to hold it. What is going on? Why has it done that? Did I just open up a log? <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. That was so terrible. 
Um, I'm just thinking about when I played. Oh, right. So I played. Uh, so this is Human Revolution, and then I played Mankind Divided. And the second time I played Mankind Divided, I um, played with an imposed challenge where I didn't have any augmentations and I had to play it as an action game. So everything had to die, shoot everything. It was a completely different game. It was so cool. Really cool challenge as well. So when you hold what you think is the aim button in this, you can go into third person mode and stick to cover and look around corners. Uh, A, B, X, Y. It's annoying trying to remember like Nintendo buttons. Usually I don't have a problem with it, but uh, because I'm recording a video and talking, I can be a bit of a dummy. God, like I really want to play this game now, but I'm like, I just know if I play this for 10 hours, something will happen on this emulator and then I'll be like, oh shit. But yeah, it's super cool to play a game like this really actually, like, really fast. Um, fast and, um, wait, wait, what? Like, aggressive stealthy. What do they call it in Blacklist? You have, like, Ghost, and then you have, like, aggressive, and then you have, like, Panther or something. Because Panther is, like, fast and sneaky. But this is running really cool. Imagine if this works on a Retro Pocket 5. Oh, hello. <laughs> Dude, I can't play this properly when I'm uh, recording. I just can't. Because there's a bit of delay. Because I'm looking at the, um, the capture instead of uh, the actual screen. I'm going to die. Oh yeah, I just remembered, you have to eat like snack bars to get your battery back. <laughs> you eat a snack, it's like, oh, now I can beat someone up. There we go. Oh yeah, so this would, this would look so cool on, um, on a Retro Pocket 5. Obviously, if you have an Odin 2 Mini as well. The Odin 2 is exactly the same, so what I'm doing right now will do exactly the same on the Mini. <laughs> Who's getting electrocuted? <laughs> I think there is a taser in this game. Is someone out there getting tased? I have no ammo. But yeah, man, I love this game. I am so sad that we'll probably never get another um, Deus Ex. I think it's done for now. Oh, right to the head. Some of the takedowns in this are super satisfying to watch. Especially in uh, uh, Mankind Divided as well. So, um, the Switch... No, not the Switch library. The Wii U library is an interesting one because there isn't, like, a lot of releases, but there are a lot of digital games. So, I am curious if there's anybody out there that has an idea of, like, some really good Wii U titles that would be great for Android because they are not on Switch or PC. Or, you know, so, like, um, if it's on Switch, then you might as well play it on Switch. If it's on PC and you have the option, you might as well play it on PC. But because it's Android, um, let's say we just forget that WinLater exists. Are there any other games for the Wii U that you can think of that would be great in this environment? Because I think that makes this emulator way better than I thought it was going to be. So when I first heard that uh, CME was coming to Android, I was like, well, you know, is there much to play there? And thinking about games like Deus Ex, I'm like, Yes, actually, there is. And, you know, there's also cool functionality of the this, um, you know, the gamepad, the tablet as well. I always get confused whether to call it a gamepad or a tablet. But, yes, super, super cool. Let me just have a run around again because I love this game. Let's just punch him in the face. Yeah, love it. <laughs> hey, Does somebody hear something? You're damn right. Oh, the same one again. Sorry, it's a bit dark. Oh, 
Did I? Yeah, I got you, bitch. So, when I put this video out, I will be extra uh, attentive. See if it gets taken down by Nintendo. Because it involves emulation. But it's not Switch emulation, so it's not like a perfect test. Um, if you watch Retro Game Core, you'll see recently that Nintendo took one of his videos down. And it was literally for showing the title screen of Super Mario 3D World for the Switch. There was no gameplay, there was nothing encouraging true piracy. So uh, it was basically just a case of um, Nintendo, they'll do whatever they want to do and you can't do a thing about it. So, um, which makes content for people like anybody doing handheld emulation and so on uh, really interesting. Um, I mean, even thinking about it, you could be a legit person with a Switch doing reviews of Switch games like any other outlet would, like IGN or whatever, and, and Nintendo could shut you down for whatever reason they deem... They don't even really need a reason. Oh, hello. <laughs> what the hell is going on? All right, let me exit out of this. So, that was a bit of a long, rambly video. Again, not planned, but... Um, Based on what I've seen so far, and the potential of what could be, see me for Android is actually very, very cool. And I'm excited to see how it works with things like the Retro Pocket 5. I mean, the Retro Pocket 4 Pro would have been a good test as well, but um, I'm not too interested in using this at the moment. The Odin 2 is already extremely powerful. Uh, ooh, oh, God, I just... <laughs> Having a little brief talk about Retroid for the moment, I think it is strange to see people getting upset about the overall power of the five. I mean, on the one hand, uh, I can see the point of view, people going, oh, it's an old chipset. Why even bother? Um, but it is better than the 4 Pro. And what it will be able to do, especially when you put the device in like high performance mode, you've got active cooling as well. So, you know, they'll be designing this handheld with this chip in mind um, to get the most out of it, which I think is something people are overlooking a little bit. Uh, I do genuinely believe that the Retro Pocket 5, I guess the Mini as well, yeah, would, would do um, pretty much every GameCube and PS2 game you could handle it, besides a couple. And the fact being that they either just didn't run well anyway because they just don't work well with emulators or there's something else like truly demanding about it that really needs a lot of power. So when I saw what power would be in the 5, I, I genuinely didn't think too much of it. I thought, okay, it's a bit of a bump. But I think people want devices to be like... Go Every device has to be the GOAT device. So this has Snapdragon uh, Gen 2 in it. And it's amazing. But if you put anything like that, uh, anything close to this in a Retro Pocket 5, um, then the Retro Pocket 5 competes with the Odin 2. And it's an already tried and tested device. It's been out for nearly a year. Nearly everybody could recommend this device because it's so good. So why compete with the Odin in that price back bracket? So what I think they are doing is... I think it's going to be okay, and I really hope that I'm able to um, do really good reviews of them because um, I have reached out to them and I said, like, I've ordered them. Um, is there a chance I could maybe get it a bit early to review it? But if not, that's okay. It really doesn't bother me, but I'll still review them regardless. But I'd really like to get in depth and see um, if you're getting the right bang for your buck for those devices because the early bird price, which is gone now, which is uh, which was back on Monday, uh, so the Retro Pocket 5 was $200. Um, I think that's gone to 210 now as pre-order prices. But what they have confirmed now is because they added additional 2 gigabytes of RAM to the device from 6 to 8 gigabytes, um, the retail price of the RP5 has now gone from 220 to 225 I think. So only five more dollars for that two extra gigabytes of RAM, which I was not expecting. So yeah, I'd be really curious to see if it's going to live up to the hype, if it's going to be worth the money. Um, and if I do a review of it on it, would I go actually just save up a little bit more and get an Odin? I mean, when you think about it, the Odin base, considering that it'll be nearly a year now that it's out, 
um, it could get to Black Friday or something, and you'll probably see a price drop on the Odin 2. So that's probably something some people have not thought about. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if they do that, especially since they've released the Odin 2 Mini, which is like basically their new flagship product. So um, because, you know, they've got a couple of devices where some people might not know which one to buy, they probably might do a price reduction on the Odin 2. So we'll have a see about that. Anyway, I've rambled on for 50 minutes, so if you like that video, please give it a like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so I can do, uh, so you can see the reviews of the Retro Pocket Mini and 5 when I do those, and yeah, have a good one. See ya.